Hmm. For me, art was art was basically curiosity. Um, I do approach it as a job. <laughs> I'm very serious, but initially was really just a, a way of being myself. So I did approach it uh, as a as an extension of of understanding myself, basically, of trying to navigate some ideas outside of myself. And, uh, but I think art is a tool. I think it's, uh, it's a fantastic tool that can have multiple uses. And apart from being personal, um, therapeutic in a way, uh, Tool. It's also a social tool, a political tool. To be an artist from the Balkans, um, I guess it means many things. Uh, it also means to have a difficult address, not sometimes the most desirable. <laughs> it means to be um, associated with conflict, with uncertainty, with uh, with something unresolved. It means to be associated with, uh, with uh, emotions, with uh, prejudices, but it also means to be associated with uh, very deep and strong uh, feelings of belonging, a certain kind of pride. Um, it's, uh, for me, it's many things. It's a conflict, but it's not only that aggressive conflict. It's a sometimes creative, potentially wonderful conflict. Um, to be an artist from the Balkan is a decision also. I think it's something that everybody who was born and raised, uh, regardless where it ended up in, the, in life, but who was born and raised here in the Balkans knows, uh, has a relationship to this geography, to this socio-political space. Um, and in some way it defines us, in some way it also defines how others see us. Um, I never necessarily uh, use this to any advantage. I think it was, uh, a, there was a moment where it was a popular thing to be or to be curated from, from, from this position, from this identity, but for me it was always something that channeled energy for me, that something was uh, not a place of, not a place that I could easily dispose of, but a place I should return to research, understand, and be part of. And um, so for me, it's, it's just a complex thing, but also extremely simple. It's a, it's a commitment at the end. To be an artist from the Balkans, it's a commitment. It's a committed emotional and political decision. There've been few uh, turning points in my research, that's for sure. Maybe. Um, I remember initially uh, what, I what was important to me was to be a good craftsman. Uh, I remember that uh, that was very conscious uh, decision of mine to learn how to draw, to learn how to use tools, how to sculpt, how to paint. I was very bad at painting, but this <laughs> But these things of like learning how to, to, to gain knowledge in my hands uh, was very important. That was maybe the initial starting conscious sort of uh, connection to art, the, 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 the study of the craft. So I was very traditionally uh, schooled. And uh, what followed, I think, as I, as I graduated from high school and went into um, 
you know, committed to studying art further, uh, obviously became the, uh, the conceptual development, the ideas became m most important. So that relaxed all of this uh, stress about knowing how to do things, and it was more understanding how to think about things. Another turning point was uh, the time I spent in the research program in Kita Kyushu in Japan at the Center for Contemporary Art, where basically I, for the first time, I understood what it means to uh, also be in a, in a very intense, positive, but like intense critical dialogue with my peers who were also in the program and also being in a place which was very isolated. So we really had each other and we had absolute time on our hands to kind of understand what we each individually do, but what we do also collaboratively. So that was a turning point in the sense that I started to seriously consider collaboration as a method in my practice. Another turning point happened when I, uh, in 2004, when I decided to return to Macedonia, to Skopje, uh, after basically living abroad from the, being, you know, from the age of 16 to, to the age of, what was I, 26 or seven at the time? So I basically decided to return and to reestablish my practice here which ultimately meant extending what was happening in the studio and becoming more of a social and political process. I, all, I, I understood that being here in Macedonia or having a base here be, would never mean uh, just being a studio artist. That would never satisfy the role one should play in this sort of context. You have to be little bit more engaged. You have to force even yourself to and to understand and participate in, in a critical, in a wider critical discourse which already existed in the in society and where culture was and art was invited to take part. So there was another turning point, understanding how my practice becomes then um, engaged with with what is happening in the in the political reality surrounding it. Um, I always defined my practice as a context based. So that was, a, that, was that moment where this became a little bit uh, clear to me what that means. This work was realized as a commission to the third edition of the Puerto Rico Biennial, which was curated by Pablo Leon de la Vara, together with MM Proyectos. So fantastic organization that I, it's no longer active, but it was active at the time. And, and, uh, and it was an opportunity for myself and also Christina Ivanovska, because this, this is a collaborative work, to translate, to translate this, uh, this work, which we, you know, Nature and Social Studies spiral trip, which we already did in Macedonia as a response to the to the uh, closing of the country following the conflict in 2001. So there was a, a completely bizarre understanding of how space is open to an, to an individual. So we did, we did the first uh, project testing the limitation of, of, of movement. So we actually, for the, for the first edition, we traced the spiral jetty um, onto the territory of Macedonia, and we traveled for seven days, circling spirally from the center back to the city. So that was like an in incredible performative work, very monumental and ephemeral at the same time. And then for Puerto Rico, we we wanted to uh, to actually translate the work one to one. So we basically created a swimming line in the dimensions of the spiral jetty of, Smith, of uh, Smithson. So we got a permission from the authorities for three days to go into the sea as far as we needed and create this swimming line which people could use to actually test the dimension and test, uh, test the, um, 
this engagement with space anew. Um, and, uh, and also something that was important for that work was built with the help of the community and it was built with almost completely out of solidarity and with uh, not much expense towards material because we, we, we recycled everything locally to create this fight. So, so it was an incredible, I think, physical accomplishment. As much as it was mental and as much as it was conceptual, it was just a physical accomplishment of doing something together, something enormous and something quite uh, heroic but at the same time very anti-heroic. <laughs> that work was actually really um, uh, challenging because I think what you refer to is the archive of the work, but the work in reality was, again, uh, difficult to, to capture. It was happening in real time in the course of seven days, and it was multiplied event, meaning that there was, a, there was an actress that was performing a scripted, very simple but uh, heavily scripted actually uh, situations at seven different positions in, in the city of Bolzano, and those positions were public spaces or monuments which were contested for one reason or another. People either loved them or hated them, either engaged with them or ignored them, but, but they were not partial to them. So, so she was there uh, representing a character that is super marginal in the history of the city, but existed. And she basically returns to provoke certain uh, reaction and that reaction, I was hoping it would lead to various narratives that the writers who we engaged in the project, and, the, and those were writers from, the, from a daily newspaper, a weekly, from the radio and television. So they would find a reason for them to, for them to engage, use the documentation of taken from the actress on site without her knowing and then generate various narratives and take the work in various different directions. And this, this happened to uh, different degrees of success with different media, but it did happen. It was a huge, actually, experiment in how we circulate uh, visual data, but also how we circulate text and, and, and uh, how we circulate information and what do we do when we have the power to circulate certain information? And what do we do when we have the power to apply text to an image? Um, so some people experienced also seeing the actress on site and actually they're helping her or not helping her in a given moment. There were some like really dramatic moments that happened without, you know, unscripted, but like in real time. In any case, there was a I think uh, submersion of what was real and what was scripted and um, later on this work became uh, documentation an archive of all that happened I understood this work only later it, it's very much a deconstructed film in public space it's it's a complete deconstructed work it is a metaphor to the complexity of our society we are you know, we deconstruct so much of what we believe in, like the belief systems that, you know, and this was maybe the most interesting to me, what do we believe in when we see an information? And do we know, do we recognize the information when we see it? And when we read it, you know, through which basically filters do we read it? And how do we actually uh, relate to it or reject it? Or how does it apply to anything? important in our life? Uh, does it have a value to change something, to change, to change reality or not? So, uh, yeah, this work really worked on many levels for me, but it also proved very problematic on many levels, yeah. So. It was a response to an invitation um, 
by the Museum of Contemporary Art in Odense, and it was a collaboration with Foss, a Danish artist um, who deals uh, with social design in his practice. We wanted to make a simple film uh, about a complex figure, a person which is, you know, has all this complexity, but it's also invisible in, in the public eye to society. It's someone that lives under the radar. So we wanted to, to have this uh, uh, person become the spokesperson, you know, for, for what everything that's wrong or right or correct or not politically correct or, um, or, or, or politically incorrect, problematic, all this uh, moment, capturing one moment and one incident and, and having this person serve as a critic and then have few short episodes where, where the character basically moves through the story and tries to find, like, uh, get, engage in a dialogue and tries to find the sort of uh, subjective solution to this situation. And basically, this, uh, by the end, it's the character is left to decide if, if this is enough of society or if one should just check out and reject this bullshit multi-ethnic and multicultural complexities, you know, this is a, maybe, I was really interested in this research we did, but I was, especially for me was, uh, I come from multi-ethnic society, multicultural, that is what Macedonia is, that is what the Balkans are, like, so, uh, but it's very interesting when you observe this, in this context, Denmark, you know, a society which prides itself on such a high democracy. But, it, but, in the, but the, on, the, on the other hand, of course, it's, um, especially at that moment, uh, the government of Denmark was so, in a way, unsensitive and restrictive in, in the context of uh, especially, uh, you know, the, the, the concept of, the, of apology like they couldn't apologize for like insulting another culture. So it, it was like, how democratic, you know, what, what can we expect from, from these uh, evolved democracies if they, if, 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 you know, if we cannot basically um, understand that the responsibility lies within the leadership to acknowledge everyone at all times and create a safe space for everybody not to feel threatened. So this was really um, uh, you know, you're asking about the paradoxical relation exactly, you know, the and this paradox I think it's what 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 will continue to manifest itself in society. Like on one hand we will be we will be appalled by by uh, political incorrect, you know, for everything which is politically incorrect, but in the same time we will be uncomfortable with political correctness. So, so, so it's going to be um, a clash and conflict that we should master to navigate, hopefully, with certain humanity and and. Um, sensitivity towards, you know, each other out, out of this paradox and into, you know, something else. I expect the, the city to remain invisible so I could always build it anew in my mind. This is something that I always experience with Skopje. Uh, never to, you know, uh, to keep keep an extremely open mind as to what the city is to me. And to keep an open mind about, you know, the imaginary narrative. So this is something completely runs parallel with, with, with the city as a living functioning organism into which I participate on a daily basis, you know. I don't mind when the city, you know, struggles 
I don't, I understand that uh, the incomplete somehow identity of the city, the, the bad governance that the city can experience, the awful truths of, uh, you know, of, of, of extreme aggression towards the, the, the green space, the parks, of the extreme aggression of the urban mafia. I, I mean, it, it's a battlefield. The city is, is, it's always like this unfortunate, somehow, recipient of hate and love. <laughs> what specifically interested me always about Skopje is how it was projected, what it was supposed to become and what it did become, and then how this, uh, how did, you know, what it, how we failed the city, how did we not manage to, to somehow secure this potential. I'm always amazed by, by our impossibility to, to, do, do a, to do a better job with, with our physical sort of reality, with our surrounding, with the, with the real. And then I always also feel disappointed that we cannot secure the narrative, capture the uh, imaginary for the generations to come, that we don't invest in better means to, to keep this narrative visible, to keep those archive, archives public, to have the museums be, uh, be somehow places that generate new knowledge, that generate new play, new playfulness, you know, new imagination. Like the city for me, it's also the, the, the people who live there that I could speak to, and especially the older generation that remembers many different stages and can articulate and reflect also uh, the becoming of the city in some way. I also accept the fact that uh, we are all just visitors, you know, to a given territory, and we are all participating in a given sort of system. And uh, it's up to us to understand how this will be done and how we're going to conduct ourselves, and if we're going to contribute or we're going to resist contributing, and we're going to then ultimately contribute to something negative. So it's it's yeah. The city is all of that for me. It's, it's, it's the understanding how to live somewhere and how to be somewhere at the same time, you know. I also have a drawing which says, like, understanding is partial. <laughs> and I think I, around that time when, when these works originated, I was dealing with the clash between what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. And I also... I was criticized, I still am sometimes, that the work um, falls short of being open. You know, it, on one hand, like, you, don't, you want to say everything uh, you can, as much as you can, and um, uh, feel that you are truly communicating. On the other hand, you do hold back or you do create a barrier so that it's not everything it's actually seen or some of this truth is prevented by, you know, to, to communicate itself by the fact that you view certain material in a certain way or you've created a certain situation that prevents this accessibility. So I worked with that a lot. I, I you know, it, it, it's wanting to be understood and then escaping this uh, understanding. Absolutely. I think it must do that, especially in a creative practice. I think we have to give value to the personal experience and um, insist on this honesty somehow. Certain things are marginal maybe to the, yes, as you say, to the, to the great narrative, but um, over time certain things become monumental and they cannot be longer ignored. So personal object for me was inspired, not inspired, but it came from my grieving process uh, after my mother passed away unexpectedly three years ago. It was the first work I did that somehow, um, that I remember, you know, feeling different about myself, like something I resolved finally. I would, I was not really able to, to, to work for, for some time and then um, 
And then once I created this work, I think something, something opened again. I mean, it sounds maybe a little bit like cliche, but it did help. You know, I was, I sort of rediscovered some joy again. And then I discovered also some strength that I could look straight into my, my pain or deal with my mental health in a way and not be, not somehow be afraid to, to, to make the work about that. To have faith is to be simultaneously alone and in a community, you know, to be alone and to understand that uh, element of complete somehow singularity, but also to understand that uh, you do things because of the need to believe in something more than yourself. And I think is uh, my faith is bestowed in the people I believe and in the community I believe in, and it's bestowed also in my sense of self. Um, I have still faith in humanity. I still feel it's, I have faith in, in, the, in the things we, we, we imagine collectively as a, as a better version of what we are, like this, this opportunity to keep growing in a, in a responsible sort of way. I have faith in that. And I believe simultaneously, I don't necessarily uh, ever felt close to any specific religion. And in, that, in the context of that work, what we tried to unpack with Christina was, was the strong faith that, the, um, that it takes to continue you know, working, to actually not lose your compass, to kind of keep the sense of self-worth and the sense of contribution as some kind of guiding force forward and to, um, to basically not give up. We, we were researching this church uh, in Kurbinovo from 11th century and we were looking at the magnificent work done, the painterly work, and then the strong sort of uh, talent and faith that it took that person to complete that work and that person uh, remaining anonymous. So we were curious as to how that is also possible and who was this person to remain anonymous, for what reason, you know, was it like a woman maybe or, or, or a very young person that was not credited. How is that somehow omitted from history, the identity of that person? And the strong faith of the community which has sustained this church for 10 centuries and has kept it as a cultural sort of a space of faith but also space of culture, like that the community takes care of this building for all this time with the eldest uh, person in the village being responsible for holding the key, which they gladly give you as a visitor so you could visit the church. So this incredible, I think, commitment uh, was something we wanted to unpack in, in We're All In This Alone. And um, obviously we do believe that we're all in this together, but we wanted to underline the fact that First and foremost, we are alone, and we march through first as a singular, and hopefully what we do does not disturb the sort of collective balance, and we can all just ultimately you know, contribute to a greater good and, and be together. So I think it's unpacking these things on faith and belief was important. We asked... Uh, few writers to reflect for the catalog for that work what is fate to them and everybody had a different position collaborating was important i also mentioned at the beginning of the interview it was one of the critical moments in my practice that i relate to the time i spent in japan where i think it was uh, uh, the first time i understood like what it means to not uh, selfishly hold on to ideas, but to but to share ideas and to uh, get somewhere together, and also to 
to grow ideas together with someone and not just ideas but to grow together in life Christina is my partner as well and um, so these dynamics of having a creative dialogue critical dialogue but also dealing with the mundane issues of daily life you know it all contributes we we love to collaborate when our individual research collides in an interesting way so we never force it it just sort of happens to be a meaningful important moment you know that sparks like a complete sort of you know direction for a new work that's that's exactly what happened with we're all in this alone but prior to that as you say like press to exit press to exit was also a conversation we had as to how for me it was important to return to Macedonia and do something and do something which I already had seen you know uh, in the places where I lived in the United States or in Holland or in Japan like I, I saw local scenes being activated uh, our generation of artists uh, creating platforms or informal groups or talking to each other so I said why don't we also uh, take our converse conversation and create a program that could possibly mean something to other people as well. I'm working at this moment I'm actually working on an installation of many different works for the Eva Biennale in Limerick in Ireland which is really just uh, one month from now so this is interesting because it's one part of my practice to revisit work and it's always I think situating it into a new space into a new reality to me it always feels like creating it completely from scratch I knew <laughs> so so I'm I'm trying to understand how the work should be situated uh, for the city gallery of Limerick now but I'm also working on a with uh, Christina, we're developing a new project based on the Oscar Hansen's Museum of Contemporary Art proposal for Skopje. Um, it's in the very early stages, but it's a very somehow bigger undertaking for us that we will be somehow speaking more in, in the near future. And I'm also working on very intimately I'm working on a set of new sculptures which are very <laughs> personal and uh, where I could actually experiment with some some stone carving again and uh, I'm doing some drawing so I'm actually this is this is me I'm you know handling something for a uh, yeah, yeah. For for some international audience somewhere, I'm not even going to be able to go to to Ireland due to the pandemic. And I'm dealing with my intimacy, and I'm also collaborating with Christina on something bigger. So that that is just how things are. And uh, yeah. So, but it's a good it's a good moment. It's a good moment. Yeah, it's a good moment for me. Yeah.